September 2023 marks the 15th anniversary of the passing of Evan Tanner, former UFC middleweight champion and one of the most popular fighters of the mid-2000s. Today we celebrate Tanner's all-too-brief career, from his underdog rise to the sports summit to the personal demons that led to his demise. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Evan Tanner. On April the 12th, 1997, Evan Tanner made his pro debut in a one-night tournament for the Unified Shoot Wrestling Federation in Texas. Tanner's journey to the ring was crafted from a young age, winning the Texas State Wrestling Championship as a junior despite entering the sport in his second year of high school. Despite the plaudits, Tanner's early life was a distant one. Dropping out of college at 19 and working several labor jobs to make ends meet, working as a bouncer, a dishwasher, and slaughterhouse worker over the next seven years. Desperate to earn cash, Tanner was encouraged by his friends to compete in a local MMA tournament, taking just six minutes to defeat his three opponents, including future UFC title challenger Paul Buentello. Tanner continued to fight for the USWF until its demise, splitting his time between the promotion and a four-fight run in Pancras, where he became the first American to win the Neo Blood tournament in 1998. Tanner's achievements were made more impressive due to not having a proper training camp, instead developing his skills through instructional videos and working out in an abandoned cabin in the woods. Tanner's success soon caught the eye of the UFC, and in 1999 made his company debut against fellow Amarillo native Daryl Golar. Tanner would win three more UFC fights between spells on the regional scene, and in 2001 was given a title shot against light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz. UFC 30 had been intended as a celebration for the promotion, the first event to be held under new ownership with their biggest star serving as the main event. It nearly ended up being one of the darkest moments in the sport's history. Ortiz's slam rendered Tanner unconscious for several minutes, with some fearing for the fighter's short term in the moments immediately after. While Tanner made a full recovery, the loss made him realize he couldn't make it to the top on his own, and in the summer of 2001, he moved to the Team Quest training camp in Oregon. The move paid immediate dividends, as Tanner bounced back from the Ortiz loss by winning seven of his next eight fights, including an ill-tempered bout with Phil Baroni at UFC 45. The match would end in controversy, as Baroni attacked referee Larry Landless due to believing the official stopped the fight prematurely. The fallout led to a rematch seven months later, with Tanner winning a unanimous decision and fight of the night honors in the process. The aggression Tanner showed in the cage was a world away from the man outside it, a nomad who had split his time between hiking, sailing, and helping out with local community projects. Tanner admitted he never cared whether he won or lost a fight, instead seeing his career as a test of his physical limitations. The biggest of his career was just around the corner. In 2005, the UFC announced plans to revive its middleweight title, which had remained dormant after Marilo Bustamante vacated the belt to compete in Pride. Tanner was chosen as one of the two men to compete for the crown, taking on grappling phenom David Terrell at UFC 51. Most of the fight's build had been centered on Terrell. The youngster had been considered one of the biggest prospects in the sport's history, including a win over Olympic medalist Matt Lindland in only his sixth pro fight, most expected Terrell to make easy work of his Texan opponent, only for Tanner to survive an early guillotine and finish the fight with ground and pound, finally claiming that UFC title that had long eluded him. It's all over! He stopped it's all it! Over. Oh my Tanner goodness! Is the middleweight champion of the world! Tanner's win was well received within the MMA community. One of the sport's nice guys finally being rewarded after years of hard work and perseverance, with many wondering how Tanner would fare against the division's new wave of fighters. His triumph, however, masked a troubled story behind the scenes. Unbeknown to the wider public, Tanner was in the midst of a battle with alcoholism. The fighter had taken up drinking during his days as a drifter, with friends later suggesting he'd regularly binge drink and go without food for several days. Tanner was in the middle of such a downturn when he received a call for his next fight, a rematch against old rival Rich Franklin at UFC 53. Tanner started strong by dropping Franklin early in the fight, only for Franklin to recover and pile the pressure on his ailing opponent, eventually ending the Texans' reign by doctor's stoppage. 
Tanner attempted to revive his career by moving to American Top Team and Brazil's shootbox training camp. And while a win over Justin Levin sparked hopes of a revival, the demons that affected his personal life started to become prevalent. In 2006, Tanner announced he would be taking an extended break from MMA, not returning to competition for two years. During his time away, Tanner announced plans to set up a foundation for disadvantaged athletes, allowing 12 young stars to live and train alongside him to further their careers. Tanner planned to document the project through blogs posted on his personal website, becoming one of the first fighters to actively use social media to engage with his fan base. It did little, however, to quell Tanner's demons. Many of Tanner's friends would speak about finding the fighter passed out after a night of drinking, with some claiming Tanner would regularly drink three cases of alcohol a day, this coming on top of the fighter's developing battle with depression. I accepted the fight at UFC 59. They gave me focus for a time, but afterwards, there was nothing. I fell into a deep depression, and I traveled all over the country trying to run from it. Following an incident in which his boat capsized during a sailing trip, Tanner made the vow to give up drinking and return to mixed martial arts. While the fighter lived up to his promise of staying sober, the years of drinking had affected Tanner's health, with the fighter often complaining of kidney pain during hard sparring sessions. Tanner returned to competition against Yushi no Kami at UFC 82, being finished by the Japanese fighter in the second round before losing a split decision to Ultimate Fighter winner Kendall Grove. Many wondered if Tanner would ever return to the same fighter of three years earlier. Little did they know, it would be his last fight in the UFC. In the summer of 2008, Tanner announced plans for a camping trip to the Palo Verde Desert for what he claimed to be a test of physical limitations. Temperatures in the region can reach as high as 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and fans were quick to raise concern over Tanner's safety. Tanner, however, brushed off the fears, suggesting the adventure would be nothing a little more than camping and shooting, and promising the venture won't be a version of Into the Wild. Tanner began his adventure on September the 3rd, 2008, telling his friends and family to alert officials should he go 24 hours without contact. According to his manager, Tanner claimed his bike had run out of gas and intended to walk to a nearby spring to refill his water bottles, only to find the spring dry when he arrived. Tanner was reported missing the following day, and after an extensive search, his body was found in the early hours of September 8th. Ominously, both Tanner's bike and several bottles of water were found back at his camp, conflicting Tanner's earlier reports regarding his location. A Celebration of Life festival was held in Tanner's memory later that month, while both the UFC and Pancrase would pay tribute to the fighter in their next shows. In 2011, a documentary about Tanner's life was released at the Los Angeles Film Festival, while rumors of a Hollywood biopic have circled for several years. Evan Tanner remains one of the most complex characters in MMA history, a man whose aggression and unbroken determination pushed him to the top of one of the toughest sports in the world. A stark contrast to the soft-spoken renaissance man many knew outside the cage. One thing that connects the two is a willingness to learn in aid of self-improvement. If that's Evan Tanner's lasting legacy, it's a darn good one to have. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss a video.